Mr. Chair, uh, the, at committee, the RCMP confirmed that their criminal investigation into whether the Prime Minister obstructed justice when he fired Jody Wilson-Raybould as his Attorney General during the SNC-Lavalin scandal was thwarted after the Prime Minister hid behind Cabinet confidence, refusing to turn over documents that were requested by the RCMP. Can the Minister confirm if the Prime Minister will finally end the obstruction and turn over the documents so that the RCMP can complete their investigation? The Honourable Minister has a maximum of 55 seconds. I would indicate to the member opposite, and I welcome him to this, uh, to this evening's uh, uh, discussion, is, is that the matter of investigations into this matter or any other matter by the RCMP are handled independently in a democracy like ours by the RCMP themselves. And it would be untoward for me to be commenting on the nature of that prosecution or uh, its uh, direction. He's talking about parliamentary member privilege. member from St. Albert, Edmonton. Mr. Chair, the RCMP investigation report states that the strongest theory towards obstruction of justice rests on whether the Prime Minister fired Jody Wilson-Raybould so that a new Attorney General would make a different decision with respect to the prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. Again, if the Prime Minister has nothing to hide, if he is in fact not guilty of obstructing justice, then why doesn't he waive cabinet confidence and turn over the documents to the RCMP? Yes, sir. The Honourable Minister has 39 seconds. What I would indicate after assuming this role is that it's never been more apparent to me the important division and distinction that's made with respect to prosecutions through the Department, Director of Public Prosecutions Act and through the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. That's actually a creation, and I'll give credit where credit is due, of the Harper government, I believe, circa around 2006, 2007. That's an important feature of our constitutional democracy. It needs to be safeguarded, and it is being safeguarded. Decisions about prosecutions are made independently of me in this democracy, and that's a good thing. In fact, it's something that the Malaysian government has actually sought to study in terms of the model that we use here in Canada and have come on visitations to me to learn about our model. Point of order. Point of order, the Honourable Member from Kingston and the Islands. Uh, just before we uh, continue on, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but um, the questions uh, that are supposed to be posed tonight are supposed to be with respect to the estimates. Is that correct? And if so, uh, the, la the last line of questioning has significantly deviated from that. Of course, Liberals don't want to talk about foreign interference and being publicly transparent. What they're conferring Albert on Albert relevance. Saint Albert Edmonton has a point to uh, respond. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd make a three observations. Uh, first of all, members have a wide ambit uh, during estimates in the questions posed to the minister. That wide ambit has been respected this evening until I posed a question relating to the prime minister's potential criminality that irked the member for Kingston and the islands. Second of all, the order in council with respect to cabinet confidence it was the RCMP that went to the Department of Justice first to ask that that order in council and its scope be extended. And thirdly, the matter of the SNC-Lavalin scandal and what followed arises from a decision of the Director of Public Prosecutions that falls within or is housed within the Minister's Department. That uh, the Honourable, uh, as was mentioned, the Honourable, all Honourable Members have a wide ambit in terms of posing questions and the questions are relevant to the Minister of Justice. So the Honourable uh, Member from St. Albert, Edmonton, next question. Mr. Chair, the very evidence that the Prime Minister has withheld from the RCMP goes to the heart of whether the Prime Minister committed a crime, whether the Prime Minister obstructed justice, whether the Prime Minister fired Jody Wilson-Raybould so that a new Attorney General would make a different decision with respect to the prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. The Prime Minister can waive Cabinet confidence tonight. So again, if the Prime Minister has nothing to hide, 
then why has the cover-up continued? The Honourable Minister has about 40 seconds. And what I would uh, uh, respectfully point out to the member opposite is the fact that an investigation was launched by the RCMP was not directed by any member on this side of the House or any member of this House, as it needs to be. And the fact that that investigation has, has run its course demonstrates that there is no, uh, uh, there is no involvement uh, by the Prime Minister or by the Government of Canada or by my office, as there needs to not be. That's fundamental to the way our democracy operates, and I would just reiterate that that distinction bears its hallmark marks in legislation that was actually introduced by the member opposite's party. The Honourable uh, Member has one minute left on the clock. Paragraph 23 of the RCMP investigation report states that it should be emphasized that the conclusions reached in this report does not translate to the absence of a criminal offence. In other words, the Prime Minister has not been cleared by the RCMP. Secondly, paragraph 24 of the report says that if there is additional evidence the RCMP will reopen the investigation. The reason the RCMP had to close the investigation was because the Prime Minister is hiding behind Cabinet documents that go to the heart of whether he obstructed justice. Isn't the real reason why the Prime Minister continues to hide behind Cabinet confidence is because the Prime Minister obstructed justice? He fired Jody Wilson-Raybould because, because she stood up to his corrupt demands that she interfere in the prosecution of SNC Lavalin. Isn't that what happened? So the uh, time has elapsed for the Honourable Member's question, but I'll invite the Minister to provide a very brief response. What I would reiterate is that the RCMP, when it makes a decision to open an investigation, conclude an investigation, which may or may not result in an act of prosecution, that is an independent decision. That is important to support in our democracy, and we will always continue to do so.